Jacksonville Historical Society, preserving your city's history, protecting your city's treasures, advocating the restoration of Jacksonville landmarks, archiving a century of historical documents, collecting rare photographs, tens of thousands, creating the Merrill Museum House piece by piece, restoring old St. Andrew's Church, receiving Florida Historical Society's top honors, publishing historical books, elegantly crafted, producing video histories, dramatically told, educating our citizens for decades, enlightening the generations to come, sponsoring tonight's special television presentation and offering you the opportunity to become a part of Jacksonville history. Call 665-0064, visit jackshistory.com and become a member of the Jacksonville Historical Society, celebrating 80 years serving our community. Now back to our interview with Norm Davis. He's talking about legendary TV4 anchorman Bill Grove. His imprint on this community through the, the operations of that news department has been profound. And he certainly worked hand in glove with me on all the projects that I was doing. Because you have to think about it. You're inventing something new that, you know, a, a, a news operation that, was, uh, that had never been done before. So thank goodness he got it right. It not only was inventing and putting in place a news organization that had never existed. It was putting in place a news organization that was very strong and very effective and very candid. Well, he was all, also good. You, you said you, you, know, you were in print journalism in school because there wasn't that much right. interest in broadcasting. Uh, in the early days, you and Bill looked to print journalism to staff the TV station because you were concerned about getting people who were really serious journalists. That's a very good point, and that's correct. Because when we began to look for, I was doing the editorials, and I was in charge of producing the documentaries. We needed reporters to do the investigative special reports. And we wanted people who, who knew what they were doing. And we looked around, and there were no people in television or radio who had any experience like that. So we went out and recruited people who had that sort of experience, as you say, in the print media, in newspapers. And over a period of those years, we brought in a number, quite a number of people who, who had that kind of experience in, in newspaper journalism and put them on the air because we were more concerned not with how they looked or how they performed, but by what they had and how they said it. There was film. There was film. But in, it, it had to be processed? Days. Yes. And so it took a while before you could get film on the air. Yeah, it took, uh, we had a processor in the building. So it took maybe 30, 35 minutes to process a roll of, of 60 millimeter film. But then it had to be edited yes. and spliced together and, and, and that sort of thing. And it did take some time. So it, you're quite right. There was no way to get, to, to get, to get instant exposure to what you brought in. Uh, that changed in the 1970s with the advent of uh, electronic cameras. And that was a profound revolution in television news, not only locally, but nationally as well. And in that case, you had uh, videotape in the camera. You still needed a certain amount of selection and editing, which, but it only took a couple of three minutes to do that, and no developing time. Talk a little bit about uh, some events that led up to an important thing in Jacksonville's history, consolidation. You uh, pioneered editorials. TV stations around the country, not many, I think, were doing editorials when you started. That's correct. So you couldn't call up a, another TV station and find out how to do it. There were very few that were that interested in serious journalism. That's, that's true. It is true, though, that there was a station in Miami at the time, WTVJ, which had been on the air a, a year or two longer than WJXT. And they had been doing editorials in Miami 
and strong ones. Uh, I had not seen a lot of those. I'd, I'd seen a couple here and there. But you're right. When we did it, we had to start figuring out how to do it. And it did take some time to get it right. The Two names that people would think about if they looked into uh, TV history would be Ralph Rennick in Miami, Channel 4 in Miami, and Bill Grove here. That's right. And, uh, and then documentaries were another thing that uh, were kind of a staple with Channel 4. And uh, half-hour documentary is something that you don't see that much of these days. And you went around the world, all kinds of foreign countries and so forth, doing documentaries. I went uh, abroad on three occasions to do documentaries, and all of these were in the 1960s. The first place I went was to Berlin. <coughs> At the time, the Berlin Wall went up in 1961. Um, the, uh, it was a highly, highly dramatic event in Europe and certainly in Berlin because of the Soviet presence. And uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors set up uh, a special trip to Berlin to take uh, armloads of letters and, and commendations and things from other mayors to present to Mayor Willie Brandt in, in the city of Berlin. And the president of the Conference of Mayors at that time happened to be the mayor of Jacksonville, Hayden Byrne. So that gave Bill Grove uh, the opening to say, let's go cover that presentation to in Berlin and have a look at the wall. So I went with a cameraman uh, to Berlin, my first time abroad, and it was, uh, we went, it was a long trip. And we went straight to the uh, city hall in Berlin, and there was a big gathering in a conference room, and Willie Brandt was there, and, and uh, Burns handed him this pile of letters from American mayors. It was a very emotional thing, and we shot that. And then we, uh, my cameraman and I, left uh, the, the mayor delegation to go their own way. And we went over to East Berlin and shot film. We went down to the Berlin Wall itself. There was no wall at that point. There was only barbed wire strung up and down to divide the city in two. And lots of, uh, of military, uh, armed military people on the other side, on the East Berlin side, were lined up all along that, that new a wall to be. So we crossed over into East Berlin with some trepidation, I, I will say, and spent the better part of a day over there in the, in the most incredible place to be in contrast to West Berlin. West Berlin looked like any modern city in America. East Berlin looked like the war, World War II had ended the day before. What kind of issues were difficult to cover? taboos, sacred cows, if any? At Channel 4? Yes. <clears throat> the only taboo that I remember experiencing was that we could only cover issues involving race on a very superficial basis. It was uh, a sad circumstance to say the least, because we had nearly absolute freedom to cover everything else and anything else, and we did. And Jacksonville has had some uh, dark chapters in, in its history because of civil rights protests and so forth. And we did not cover them well. Nor did anyone else. Nor did anyone else. For that matter. And I. I want to go ahead and be honest about this because we didn't cover it because the general manager did not want it covered. This was a, the man who had given us what, as I said a moment ago, a total flexibility and freedom to cover problems and issues in that community. So this was a blind spot, this perhaps. For him. And, and, and he was a great uh, civic leader and, and a good general manager in almost every other respect. Signed the, manif the Yates Manifesto. Yes, he did. Along with other uh, important Well, he, he came to his adult life from Alabama. And he, had, he was shaped by his upbringing there and by his family circumstances in Alabama. And he was what he was. 
and he was he would not bend at all on those things, even when we talked to him about that. So I have to acknowledge that reality, but the other larger reality was that we could do what we wound up doing in exposing problems and difficulties in this community. That was a conversation with Norm Davis on the early days of broadcasting in Jacksonville. This show will soon be posted on our website, the uh, Historical Society website, jackshistory.com. And that's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. So long, everyone.